Welcome back children. So we have completed four chapters in science. First chapter we did time and motion. Second we did physical and chemical changes or changes around us. Third we did nutrition in plants. Fourth we did heat. And today we will start the fifth chapter that is nutrition in animals. Now students, if you remember that when we did nutrition in plants, we have learned about autotropic nutrition. Here we learn about heterotrophic nutrition. Now all living organisms require food to stay alive. Plants can manufacture their own food by the process of photosynthesis that you have already learned in chapter 1. But what about animals and other non-green plants? Non-green plants, they depend on the green plants as well. You have in chapter 1 you have read about parasitism, symbiosis, right? Then saprophytic mode of nutrition. But what about animals? Animals solely depend either on plants or on other animals for their food. So, nutrition which involves the dependence of an organism on plant or on another animal for their source of food comes under heterotrophic nutrition. Okay. So all animals are heterotrophic in nature or you can say they are heterotrophs. Now for heterotrophic nutrition different type of modes are there depending upon the mouth parts depending upon the place where they live the type of food they eat for example think about mosquito how do they take in food they take in liquid food that is in the form of blood so what do they have they have a spinneret sort of mouth part which pierces the skin of an animal or of man and they suck in blood. This is one mode of obtaining nutrition. Some, like frog, they have a sticky tongue. Right? Their tongue is attached in the front and it is free behind, inside the mouth, behind, at the back. It is free. Ours is what? We have our tongue which is free in the front and it is attached to the floor of the mouth at the back. But in case of frog, it is the reverse. It is attached to the floor of the mouth in front and is free behind. So what happens? And the tongue is very, very sticky. So what happens? The frog lolls its tongue out of its mouth. Clear? As soon as any insect sits on the tongue, it sticks to it and it quickly brings the tongue inside in this way. So the front portion blocks the passage and the insect is unable to move out of the mouth and then it swallows. Right? Ducks. Ducks, you have seen, they put their mouth, put their head inside water and they allow the water to move inside its mouth. Now, the lower surface of the beak acts like a strainer. So the water comes out, the solid particles remain inside. Means it filters. So that is why they are also called as filter feeders. Means their mouth acts as a filter 
in straining of water and only keeping the solid particles in the mouth. In this way, think of housefly. How do housefly uh, take in the food? By the process of licking and lapping. What is this process? Now, whatever food is there, when a housefly wants to have the food, at first, it spits on the food. Right? When it spits on the food, the food gets dissolved in the spit. And after the food gets dissolved, it licks it and laps it. So this is the mode of nutrition which is seen in case of housefly. In case of, uh, think of spider, they form a web. In the web, any insect gets trapped. Once the insect gets trapped, the spider attacks the insect and takes in, extracts the whole juice from its body. It does not eat the whole insect. It only absorbs, it only extracts the fluid part from its body. And in this way, it feeds. Clear? But for mammals and us, man, we have a different type of feeding habit. That is called as holozoic nutrition. Remember, holozoic nutrition. Now, what is this holozoic nutrition? In this mode of nutrition, we take in whole food. Clear? We take in whole food. That is called as holozoic mode of nutrition. Means in the form of peas, in the form of whole big piece of food inside our mouth. Right? And then we chew it, we swallow it, it gets digested, and there is a long process. So actually, Holozoic nutrition involves five different processes. What are they? First is ingestion. Second is digestion. Third, absorption. Fourth, assimilation. And fifth, ejection. Right? So these five processes are involved in holozoic nutrition. Starting from ingestion, then comes digestion then comes absorption, then comes assimilation, and at last, ejection. So we'll go through each of these parts in detail in our next class. Thank you.